Did you ever dream about being a ninja when you were a kid? Performing death-defying stunts? Or being a master of martial arts? Yeah, nah. Me either. iNinja. Releasing in 2003 in North America, this game received average critic reviews for the time, most scoring it in the mid to high 70s. There was a sequel reportedly in the works, but the studio who created the game had to shut down due to economic downturn. So this single underappreciated action platformer is the only one we ever got from this franchise, and that is a shame. This game feels pretty unique in its execution of its mechanics, and I think a sequel would have only worked to improve upon what they started here. Anyway, now that this game is almost 20 years old, I figured we'd take another look and see what sort of games 9 year old me was into. So when you start up the game, you get this short cutscene with absolutely no context. It shows Ninja rescuing his sensei from chains, followed by killing some giant lizard thing who pukes up a weird glowing rock. Then he just picks it up without a second thought, gross, and it sends his body flinging wildly through the air where he runs into his sensei, hitting him against some metal box and decapitates him. Then sensei turns into a ghost, telling you that thing you just grabbed was a rage stone. All of a sudden we're being told we have to retrieve them all, but we aren't told what they actually do, where they came from, or why we want them, or you know, anything at all. And he isn't even upset that you just killed his ass. All he wants to do is continue your training and have you defeat the protectors of the stones. Again, no context. Who are these protectors? How did they get the stones? What do these rage stones actually do? What are we working towards besides gathering the stones? So many questions. After the cutscene, you get spit out on this random beach with a giant robot who looks like Megazord from Power Rangers. This is the first overworld area called Robot Beach. Sensei tells you that his name is Tekeyama, but f that, we're sticking with Megazord. Then he mentions that you have to go from level to level collecting missing pieces of the robot that the enemy stole so we can put them back together and fight this first protector of the stones, Kaiza. So the first thing I noticed about this game was that the camera controls were inverted. And you can't turn that off. F me. The first level off to the left is called Eye Ninja. So obviously in this one, we're gonna be retrieving one of Megazord's missing eyes. If you press the X button to rush through Sensei's text, you'll hear Ninja shush Sensei really loud, which is a nice touch and it made me laugh the first couple times. Ninja also delivers his own voice lines at the start of every level, but the only actual funny one is... Anyway, the first level is straightforward enough and does a good job introducing you to the game's mechanics. You've got your basic square attacks, the spin attack with circle, an uppercut slice with X and circle press simultaneously which launches them into the air, double jumping and pressing square will deliver a devastating blow to the enemies that will sometimes leave them sliced in half. As a kid, the first time I saw an enemy get sliced in half, I was like, <gasps> Beyond those basic attacks, you also have a power-up called Ninja Berserka or something like that. Press up on the D-pad and it makes your attacks much more powerful for a short amount of time. There's also Ninja Revive, which is a health regen that builds up over time. You use that one by pressing right on the D-pad. As you play the game, you unlock more power-ups, but to be honest, I almost never use them. You unlock one for down on the D-pad, which is Ninja Shuriken. This one lets you ride around on a giant shuriken for a bit hitting enemies, but it's nothing that special. The last power up is I Ninja, and this one hits everything in sight without you having to actually do anything. You can just run around and watch your enemies die. Charging the power ups is as simple as hitting enemies, but once you use any power up the charge goes back down to zero for all of them. Ninja's voice lines are something that started to wear on me over time. By the thousandth time you hear... Or... You really start contemplating muting the TV. Every batch of enemies you fight will get at least one quip from Ninja, sometimes two, and there's not enough variety to justify the frequency. This would be by far my biggest complaint. 
In the late 90s and early 2000s, every game company thought they needed an angsty character to appeal to the young teens and older children in order for their game to sell well. I guarantee that the artist pitch for the main character went a little something like this. Hey, so I did up a design for that character for the game. Let me know what you think. Are you fucking kidding me? Do it again. So anyway, this first level's got you running through a basic gauntlet of obstacles, nothing special, just enough for you to learn how everything works. You've got your grapple hook, your sword hover, your wall run, half pipe, these running sections where you use the grapple hook at the right time to change your angle and keep your speed, the grind rails, and then next thing you know, you found that twat that stole Megazord's eye. So you gravestone his ass and then you hop on the eye to start monkey balling it back to the beach. Next comes my favorite part of the level. You race down this track and you see enemies lined up like bowling pins and if you hit them in the right spot you get a strike. It's pretty funny. This game has a few of these monkey ball type sections and someone on the iNinja team was obviously a Sega fan. There's also a couple challenge levels that feel like a slight nod to the 3D Sonic games. After you beat the level, you'll see this screen showing all your stats and your current progress. Each enemy you defeat gives you progress towards your next sword upgrade, and each mission you complete gives you a grade which counts as progress towards your next belt. Each belt that you get increases your maximum health as well. I love the animation for the sword upgrade. It just shows him dropping his old one into the abyss and catching the new one. The best sword in the game is the soul sword. Okay sweet, so now that we got Megazord's first eye back, let's quickly push the start button and go to the progress screen. Here you'll see how many levels are available in Robot Beach. It will also show you that some are locked behind a specific belt requirement. Most levels can be played up to three times with slight variances. Each time you replay a level, it will either be a time trial, a collect the red coins trial where you have to find all the red coins, and a defeat the enemies trial where you have to defeat every enemy in the level. The best way that I can describe these is tedious. Alright, next level is eye to eye, which is where we grab Megazord's other eye that the enemies are using as a laser. We start off by giving these guys the business, then we take this elevator to a couple of these running sections with the grapple hooks, and then there's a platforming section where we need to free the eye and do another monkey ball style dash to the beach. This one is way harder than the first one though. I got duped right out of the door. Oh my god. <laughs> Once you know it's coming though, it's not bad. The section isn't hard, it just takes a bit of patience. The ball starts and stops pretty responsibly though. Okay, so now we got both eyes and Megazord be looking tough as hell. But we still need one more piece before we can go give Kaiza his ass whooping. Last up in this first area, we've got Heart Attack. This one's got you avoiding robots that send you back to the start, but it's really easy. You can just jump up top and completely skip them. After that, we unalive some thugs who need unaliving, which unlocks the path forward into this circular room where we keep running up the walls until we're at the top. There's a running grappling hook section, and then we run into this enemy that reminds me of a dog, and it can breathe fire for some reason. Then we have another monkey ball section, and this one is a combination of the first two, where there's obstacles to avoid and narrow paths to navigate, as well as sections where the enemies line up as bowling balls. Watch out for these sections where the platforms are going back and forth because they don't come to sit flush with the ledge you're rolling off of. You gotta approach them with a bit of speed. And with that, Megazord has been restored to his former glory and we're ready to go kick some giant robot ass. The boss fight for Kaiza is really fun, my favorite one in the game. It's basically a giant boxing match where you duck and weave his punches like Mike Tyson and counter with your own combos until you knock him out, brush your shoulders off like a pimp, and then shake him down for his rage stone. After you beat him, you get a limited context cutscene where Ninja grabs the rage stone and then starts talking to this random person on the beach we've never seen before. And apparently he's able to unlock the next area. So he's trying to find the key while Ninja tries to keep himself from killing him in his rage stone induced fury. Eventually he finds the key and we fly through the door into the next area, Bombay. So as soon as I got here, I just turned around and headed back through the door because now we have access to the first two challenge levels in the first area. So when you head back, the same random dude from before tells you if you can find him, he'll have a challenge for you. Makes it sound like he's hiding. Well, the loser is just standing here on the beach, so it's not like he tried very hard. Talk to him to get started. 
These levels you have to pay to play. No point in saving your coins though because they're only used to pay for challenge levels. They serve no other real purpose. The first challenge level is called Fly Ninja. You have to collect all the red coins. This one is one of those nods to 3D Sonic where you're running really fast and there's some heavy guitar riffs playing. When you float in the air to grab the coins, the guitar riff stops and there's this serene music that's pretty relaxing. But as soon as you drop back down, the guitar starts back up. It was pretty funny the first time, but the constant switching of music got a bit jarring. The second challenge is another monkey ball style level. Collect all the red coins and don't fall off. This one was pretty easy. There are a couple more levels like this later in the game and they get a lot harder. If you run over here, you'll see this door blocked off by a purple shield that Sensei says he doesn't know how to get through. Well, it's a good thing that I do. This is a battle arena that can only be unlocked after 100% completion of the game. So you'll have to beat every level as well as the variant replays for time attacks, red coins, and defeating enemies I mentioned before, and the challenge levels. There's 64 grades to get in total, and you need just under 40 to get your black belt and beat the game. I'll be up front and tell you right now that I did not get all 64 grades, but that's how you do it if you want to. I don't like it when games make you replay the same stuff over and over to artificially flesh out the duration. Okay, and with that out of the way, now we can move on to Bombay. So this level doesn't have a giant robot to put back together unfortunately. The first level I did was this one up to the right, which is a turret defense style game. You need to defend the beach against waves of enemies, and if even one gets through, you'll fail. Good thing that I'm a real one and I did it on the first try. Just so you know, the camera controls are inverted here too. Felt like I was playing an FPS backwards. I know, I know, this used to be the standard back in the day for camera controls, but we didn't know what was good back then. There were some times this level got stressful though. They really hammer you with a lot of boats at the same time, as well as flying enemies, and there's more waves than you'd think. I would have lost for sure if it wasn't for the alarm that goes off when an enemy gets near the beach. This level took a long time just because how many enemies there were. I was hoping the boss battle for this area would utilize these turret mechanics, but alas, I was let down. Around this point you unlock shurikens and explosive darts, which are definitely useful in some areas, but most times I forgot they existed unless I needed to use one for something. Next level I did was down here, Rocket Factory. So basically we're busting into the rocket gun factory to mesh it up. So we do what we do, cut down the enemies and ruin their electronics. Before long you run into this group of dog looking enemies. And these had me torn because they look just like real dogs and I genuinely questioned the designer who thought these enemies were a good idea. A little further down the way we run into our first mini boss where we do a very anime-esque fight in the air. This game has a lot of these mini bosses but they're all the same. He's only got a few attacks and they're easy to dodge. Do a full dodge to one side when he goes for an attack and then quickly dash in and do your counter attack. Do this like 5 times and he's dead, falling back to the ground and dismembering himself with his own Thanos sword. So this next part of the factory after the mini boss is sort of like a where the hell do I go now kind of deal. I ran around for a bit before my smooth brain was able to figure it out. You just have to ride along the conveyor belt after destroying a rocket. Then you take its place and the claw will come by and grab you by the head and carry you over to the next section. We dash through some hallways and end up here where we grapple over to this idiot shooting rockets at us. After that, we keep making our way downtown, walking fast, we kill these enemies to get through the door, go for a dip in this random ass pool, ride the rail now that we're soaking wet because that seems safe, and then beat a bunch of rocket enemies to end the level. All you have to do now is hop on a rocket and ride it to blast off at the top. Definitely not an innuendo, I swear. Next up is Chase the Fuse. This one is really easy. You just need to beat the fuse to the end of the race, but you got a lot of time. Just don't bother with too many of the enemies and you'll have no problem. The fuse speed is slower than your run speed, so you can catch up even if you fall behind. Which is good because you're definitely going to fall behind the fuse in this half pipe section near the end. After that level, I ran over here to the last one before the boss, grayed in a cage which was a really fun level where you need to navigate an explosive barrel through a lot of obstacles and break open the cage containing the grate. This level has enemies as well that try to hit you with rockets and some of the obstacles are tricky to get through. If you lose the barrel, you have to start over at the start. The last ramp you go down has a nasty curve at the end and it almost got me. 
All right, now we're ready to take on the next boss, Ventus. He's a robot fish and you fight him from a submarine. This is a really easy boss fight. It starts with these falling mines you have to avoid and then he has a few basic moves he does like lunging at you or launching a mine or a series of mines at you. But all his moves get telegraphed way in advance and his health drops fast because you can just keep firing the entire time. Now that we beat the boss, it's time for another cutscene where another random is introduced right as we're leaving the area. The random woman tells you how awesome you are and she keeps chasing you around asking you for a hug. Y'all ever see that Stay Fit commercial? Anyway, we bust through the door and end up in Jungle Falls, which has a real cursed tiki vibe. So we swim through the water and head over here where the levels are. We're already blue belt, so we could just do the boss right away, but that's no fun. So the first level I did was over here to the right, buzz off. What you gotta do in this one is use a rocket to kill the giant bug on the giant tree, which has a grade we're after in its giant ass. Take these dudes at the start away from their families real quick and then we're off. You're gonna get to this rocket that you have to use to shoot the fence and then again to hit the log, then one more time to hit the last far away fence. Shoot these bugs for them to fall and create platforms. Don't ask me why. The next section has a lot of enemies to defeat and then we use the rockets again to blast open another pathway. Through there we have one of those mini bosses who we embarrassed before. Now his brother wants some too. Make quick work of him and then shoot some more platform bugs to get to the next rocket section where we blast another door and end up in the last section which is exactly the same as all the other sections. Kill the enemies and use the rockets to blast the door and then again to blast that thang in its giant ass. Next is ride the logs. This level is straightforward, kill enemies and jump from log to log against the current to get to the next sections. This level has the first different mini boss, but it's debatably easier than the other dudes with the Thanos swords. It can shoot rockets, but just dodge side to side. It always shoots three in a row, then it has a big opening for attacks. If you stay close and avoid his pathetic swipes, you can dash back in and get him again. They're not hard. Right afterward, we fight another one, but he doesn't take us into the air. More logs, then more enemies, another of these ugly losers, then another mini boss cosplaying as his dead brothers for a deluded attempt at revenge. Get fucked. Then we take this giant acorn thing to destroy the blockage of the tree's arteries so we can progress. We grab another acorn so we can run up the wall here which brings us to the end. At this point I realized I never did the Bombay challenge levels so I quickly backtracked to give those a try. You can find the large creepy lady on the pirate ship with the half pipe straight out of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. So you talk to her and she calls you a kung fu pussycat, and I don't really know how to feel about that. The first challenge level has you using the grapple hook to get through a gauntlet of turns where you need to time the releases right in order to make it without getting sent back to the start or falling. I would have made this on the first try but I choked hard near the end. A few tries later I got her done though. The next challenge level for her was another monkey ball one. Collect red coins and make it to the end before the time runs out. This one was kinda hard. They put red coins right up on the edge and finessing it to balance and not fly off isn't easy. Thankfully they give you more red coins than 150 so you don't actually need to get them all. Funny enough I almost completely missed the grade at the end and would have had to do it all again. Okay now with that out of the way back to Jungle Falls. The last level here is Sly Ninja which has a lot of these security bots we saw before that send you back to the beginning if they catch you. You need to outmaneuver them in order to open the doors to the next area. Eventually you find a rocket where you need to blast open the door to access the unlock for the next area. Then you use the rocket again when the door is open to blast another blocked door. After that you use these logs to totally skip the security bots and open the door to the next section. Watch for the grind rail trap and after that you'll end up here where you have to defeat the enemies to go through. This level is actually really long and overstayed its welcome by the end. Every time I went through another door and it wasn't the end of the level, I was like, come on! Hop on some more logs and then wall jump to another of these mini bosses. We aren't gonna rest until that whole family is in the ground. <laughs> that guy won't be going home with his kids. Okay, so yet another door, which is blessedly the last one. Run through some enemies and you end up here at this turret where you need to shoot these pods to block the exhausts as they open to destroy the machine. I think this was the longest level in the game. It's way too long. It took like 20 minutes. Okay, time for the next boss, Sayaman. 
This boss starts out with basic enemies you need to destroy before accessing this mech suit. So we hop in the suit and it's got to be the slowest moving mech suit I've ever seen in my life. Good thing we don't need to move for this one. All you gotta do is shoot the ghost that Sayamon releases toward you, then shoot his missile attacks before they hit you. In this fight you're basically just trying to buy yourself time until your charge attack at the bottom right fills up. These attacks are the only way to damage him. He's not a difficult boss once you figure out what to do. Another random cutscene with another random character we've never seen warning us about the Rage Stone and telling you where to find the next one, but so far it's probably the mildest and least ridiculous cutscene in the game. After the cutscene we unlock Mountain Gorge, the second last area. When we get through the door, Ninja says a voice line out of nowhere in response to Sensei that actually made me piss myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As my grandmother once said to me, she was mad too. I really didn't see it coming. Let's go back and give those Jungle Falls challenge levels a try. Go find that random dude from before who's just standing back here. The first challenge level is Jump and Grind, which was really easy. The move speed is so slow there's little chance you're gonna mess up. The second challenge level is the last monkey ball style level in the game and it's hard as f You're on a time limit to collect red coins and it starts similar to the last one but they change it up in a few ways to make it a lot harder. Like taking away most of the ramp here so you don't have enough speed to sneak back onto the middle if you didn't make it up before this section. Then it stays skinny for a while. Then it hits you with this toothpick section and some crazy ass turns right at the end. I'm gonna be honest you guys, I could not do this. I got close a few times but the last section is just f***ed. I sat there for 40 minutes trying and I said screw it and moved on. If you're not going for 100% it's not even worth it. Alright back to Mountain Gorge. This is my least favorite hub world because each level is so far away from each other so traveling from one to the next just takes too damn long. First level is Sneak and Destroy, another level where we need to avoid these annoying ass security robots. I'm not going to go too in depth on this one because if you played the other ones, you played this one. You're sneaking around trying to find the switches to open the doors to the next area. One thing I will say though is these robots are stupid as hell and you can hide behind tiny objects to avoid their detection. I really dislike these security bot missions because they all take so long. At the end here you use this rocket you find to destroy the crystal in the middle and grab the grade. You gotta time it right though to avoid the multitude of security robots. After that we head all the way the fuck over here to this next one clouding around. You have to navigate these moving platforms and avoid the rockets these broken condoms keep shooting at you. I'm sure you can guess what to do at this point. Find the button for the door, press it, and move on. Same idea in the next room. Except you need to turn on all the fans so you can reach the grade. There's four in total, as well as two mini bosses that will respawn if you die. So don't be a fucking idiot like me and forget to press one and then have to do it all again. Anyway, use the helicopter sword move to hover from fan to fan and grab the grade at the top. Next up we got Crystal Cavern. We have to go in all three directions and release the arms holding the giant crystal they show at the start. Doing that will drop it down and break it so we can grab the grade inside. Simple enough. So I went right first, not much of note over here, some basic platforming and enemies that jump out of barrels who we dispose of in no time. Defeat these enemies across the water and then make that mini boss wish his mom swallowed him. After that we're up these ramps, do the wall jump to get to the next area, where we take a grind rail to go all the way back down, some more basic platforming later and we're finally at the first arm. Use explosive darts to shoot down this pube, then use another one to shoot the arm down. One down, two to go. Next I did the one to the left. It starts with basic platforming, then some enemies you need to defeat to open the door. Head up there for some more mandatory enemies, defeat them to see what's waiting for you. Another mini boss here to avenge his brothers, well, no reason that this one should go any different than the rest of them. Put a toe tag on him and then keep moving. Some more ramps that serve no purpose, more basic enemies and platforms and then we're at the next arm. One left. Go down the middle and avoid the red shields. I said avoid. And hit the switch for the door. Run through some basic enemies and then run up these half pipes. Wasn't a fan that there was three side by side here, like what the hell? This was such a waste of time. 
Anyway, grind the rail all the way back down. And then fight the horde of enemies they have here for you to open the door. Run through the tunnels and we're finally at the last arm. This was another level that took a damn long time. Okay, so sticking with tradition on this map, the boss is ridiculously high up and far away from everything else. So we're making our way uptown, climbing fast, and then we finally get to the boss, Malachi. Let me just say, what a letdown! This boss is the lamest boss in the game. There's nothing cool or fun like a mech suit or a turret or giant robot. You just fight this one-eyed idiot and his stupid stick. So what you gotta do is jump around in circles, avoiding his lightning, and then collect shuriken. Throwing shuriken is the only way to hurt him in this section, and each one does almost nothing. It's not like this is even hard, it's just so friggin' time consuming to whittle his health away like this. Hit him enough and then he starts firing in a circle, but it's not gonna hit you. Eventually he finally starts to fight, and the fight was a little better in this part, but only because it went by faster. He's got some basic attacks that aren't hard to avoid, and he teleports behind you if you try to hit him at the wrong time. You have to hit him after he misses you with a physical attack, before he's back in his neutral pose or starting another attack. This wasn't a fun boss at all, because up to this point they set the expectation in my mind that every boss would have some sort of cool mechanic, but this one didn't get one. After we beat him we get a cutscene showing another person we've never met, but at this point I'd be more surprised if there wasn't one. Anyway, she tells us that Kelly Malachi gave us the teleport stone, which will bring us to the last area moon base. She also tells us that the last boss, Odor, has the most powerful stone, which has the ability to revive people. She also tells us it makes the living immortal, which sets up a, hmm, will he use it for himself or for sensei type situation. So let's quickly head back to Mountain Gorge and give the challenge levels a try. Those ones are the last ones and they're really expensive. The first one is a harder version of the grappling hook challenge before. It's really long, but it's not that hard. It only took me a couple tries. The second one, Eggshell Skull, was really tough and cost a thousand coins. This one has you fighting the first boss again, but your health is only at one, so you have to do it flawlessly. So if you didn't like that first boss, best to avoid this one, unless you like watching Megazord's head get jettisoned into the stratosphere over and over and over. Alright, back to the moon base. First up here we got Outpost Alpha. I'll give you two guesses what the next level is called. Anyway, near the start we have this half pipe section where we need to run up until we can jump on the grind rail to progress to the next section. Same thing on the other side, but you're going to be doing it so you can jump into the cutout on the wall there. Next section after the first ramp, stop and look to the right to see some rockets which we need to use in order to blast open the door to the next section. There is more enemies and a mini boss off to the right, and after that we go through that door we just blasted a minute ago. Deal with a bunch of enemies and then you've got these blue rings we need to jump through. Get used to how it feels cause before long we're shmovin'. This level has a couple of these low gravity sections as well where we're seemingly floating out in space for a bit. More enemies, another ring section, and then we're at the second low gravity section. You need to use the helicopter sword in conjunction with the grapple hook in order to make it through this part. Make quick work of the mini boss, then jump down here where we wall jump to the other side and grapple across, where we face off against these two wannabe dragons and grab the grade. Outpost Beta is similar in nature to Outpost Alpha. Near the start there's more of those rings you need to jump through, shortly after we end up at this giant half pipe with a bunch of kooks and ramp tramps getting in the way at the bottom. So take care of them so you can run back and forth to get enough speed to actually use it for its intended purpose. Head up until you can jump off the wall and use your grappling hook. We've got a mini boss with one of those samurai bug things followed by a tricky platforming section. It's tough because I'd actually love to be able to angle the camera down to get a better sense of distance, but the game does not let you. Don't be an idiot and fall here like I did because otherwise you're fighting that mini boss again like I did. Shortly after we have more rings to jump through where the level ends with some basic enemies and a mini boss. The second last level is Cryo Chamber, which is pretty short. Pretty sure this is where they keep all the enemies when they're not out pissing you off. Well we're here to do some good old fashioned sabotage. What you need to do is hit these yellow things sticking out of the sphere in the middle. Each time you destroy one you have to run all the way back up to the top. The blue liquid will kill you. 
You need to do this eight times in total, and there's enemies who are more of an annoyance than anything else. You can completely ignore them if you want to. The grade will appear up top once the thing in the middle has been successfully destroyed. The last level before the final boss is the Imperial Guard. This is another very short level where all we have to do is defeat Odor's last line of defenses. There's a new enemy variant here that you don't see anywhere else. Some really tall enemies that just do cartwheels into you. They're really easy to kill and I don't know what the point was in creating them just for this level and to have them be so easy but whatever. Once you defeat most of the enemies, you get greeted by the final brother of the mini boss militia. Finish him off and put an end to that family tree, then ride along the grind rails and platforms and make your way up to the top where you can grab the grade. And with that, we're finally at the last boss, Odor. So you can only challenge him once you have your black belt, and as I mentioned earlier in the video, you need to play through a decent amount of level replays in order to get enough grades for the black belt. If you haven't been doing that at all yet, you're in for a bit of a slog before you can actually go ahead and beat the game. The last boss is so easy, which was another letdown. If you've ever fought the Panda King in Sly Cooper, then you've basically done half this boss fight already. He's also just ridiculous. The whole game they're calling him Odor, and I didn't think a damn thing of it. Then when you get to him, he's literally farting non-stop, and they make some low-brow jokes surrounding the flatulence. Even at the very end, this is a game that never took itself seriously. Any sort of intimidation factor he might have had was stripped away as soon as he started talking. So he has two phases. In phase one, you just need to dodge shuriken and then dodge his hammer fist and counterattack after he misses. This stage doesn't take long as his health goes down pretty quick. In phase two, he teleports out to space where he makes you chase him to the place he's decided the final battle is going to take place. I guess this is as nice a place as any for his grave. So this is the section I was saying is just like the Panda King. You run on a three-tiered surface, avoiding bombs that drop and create a ring of explosions, making your way closer until you hit him a few times where he sends you flying back and you have to do it again. It's literally the Panda King boss fight. Anyways, after you do that a bunch of times, you put an end to his pungent reign of terror. So we get one final cutscene where he explodes and sends his disgusting flatulence goo everywhere. This video makes you think that Ninja is going to keep the stone for himself instead of reviving Sensei, but in the end he relents after some light guilt tripping and uses the stone to bring Sensei back to life. Where they walk off together bickering the whole way. At the end of the last cutscene, they look like they're setting the game up for a sequel, showing Odor coming back to life. But obviously we never got the second game, so that's too bad. So after playing it again, I feel that this game is the perfect duration for what it is. Each level is fun in its own way, and it never overstays its welcome. As well, most of the boss fights are pretty fun and unique for platformers of their time. All in all, iNinja is a great action platformer that I highly recommend that you check out for yourself. Thanks for watching today's video. And be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed what you saw today. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> oh my god, I'm getting worse. It's not gonna hurt me. Just literally just throw it hard. Just hit right at my face. <laughs> oh my, oh my god. god.